Welcome to Voice Bootcamp, a global name in unified communication. Hello, my name is Faisal Khan, CEO and founder of VoiceBootcamp.com. In this self-study kit of deploying Cisco Unified Contact Center Enterprise with CVP 11.5, I'm going to discuss about the peripheral gateway and CTI server. Now, peripheral gateway, which is used an intermediate device between UCCE or ICM server and a peripheral. So what is a peripheral? A peripheral could be a PVX, could be an ACD, could be IPIVR, VRU, for example, or even a CVP server. Call manager is also known as a peripheral. Now each peripheral will act as a routing client because they will be the first person to initiate a call to the UCC server. So each one of these peripherals can have, or have the ability to send a request, route request to the UCC. So therefore they are also considered as a routing client. PG will then send a routing request to the UCC uh, system. A PG can be a single, a single multiplex compu uh, computer, which means that if you are using it for training or lab purposes, or pair of duplex computers, which of course must be used in production environment. A single PG, however, can service more than one peripheral at a time. However, there is a restriction. If that single PG, PG server, virtual machine, can only have one age, uh, uh, one PIM that can point to a particular agent call manager cluster uh, due to the restriction of the JTAPI plugin. Now each peripheral will use one and only one PG process, not necessarily the server. Now through the PG, uh, uh, although a PG can consist of a pair of a duplex computer, only one of them will be active at a time. So the system software sees it and then see it as a single logical and a physical PG. Now the communication between a peripheral, so these are your peripheral right here, the call manager, CVP, these are known as a peripheral and to communicate between them you need a PG server. So this uh, green circle that you see are my PG server. So call manager will talk to the unified CM PG while CVP will talk to the VRU PG in order to communicate with your central controller. So the PG provides the intermediate connectivity between the peripheral itself as well as the central controller system. Now, in order to configure the peripheral PG, we must have a what we call is a peripheral interface manager. Think about peripheral interface manager as a virtual interface. You know, you guys are dealing with Cisco router, for example, have a fast Ethernet interface, and then we create sub interface. Well, PIM or Peripheral Interface Manager happens to be that same concept. From a single PG, you can have multiple PIM. Now, uh, depending on the relationship of the type of PG that you configure, the parent level versus the PIM level, that will make a huge difference. For example, if I create a PG called PG underscore, let's say, CUCM, and underneath that I create PIM1, uh, PIM2, Two. This goes to let's say uh, CUCM pub, and this one goes to sub one uh, sub A. Now in this scenario, this is my parent configuration. These are child configuration. So the type that you configure on this will be uh, will make a huge difference because if you configure the parent to be um, let's say a specific type of PG whether it's a call manager or a via or a third party, then the PIM can only be that type of PG itself. So let's say, for example, if I'm creating a parent PG being CUCM, that means call manager, then PIM1 and PIM2 type also has to be call manager. These are more like a unified PG. Whereas if I want to create PIM1 for call manager and PIM2 for CVP, for example, in that example, the parent can be set to generic PG or system PG. So that's one of the things that you have to keep in mind. Each redundant PG pair can have a maximum of 2000 agent. So in the case where I have my subs subscriber, let's say 
subscriber A, I have subscriber B. Now, because each call manager server has their own CTI manager server, a PG can only point to one CTI manager at a time. So I could, uh, so this is what, what one of the things I have to make sure that when I create this PIM, PIM1, which can only point to one IP address. Now with a combination like this, a combination like this can handle up to 2000 agent. If you need more than 2000 agent, then you need to create more complex connectivity where crisscross it to each other uh, in order to have multiple PIM per PG server. But each PIM will point to different IP addresses. Now you deploy each PIM on a different P agent PG. Uh, deploy only one agent PG on a particular virtual machine because when we configure the virtual machine to communicate with uh, peripheral like the PG server what happened is we need to download something called JTAPI plugin uh, when you install the plugin we can only point to one particular cluster IP address so therefore that if I if I am dedicated a, a one Windows 2012 server for US call manager cluster I cannot use the same server for India cluster which is totally different from the US so therefore I must have a separate PG server for that for each P, uh, CVP server or IP IVR server a single uh, you need one VRU of each VRU PIM can reside either on a VRU PG or a generic PG server so unified CM Peripheral Interface Manager, P, 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 PIM, which we will sign in to establish a JTAPI communication. The JTAPI communication is between the call manager and the PG, so, uh, PG Pro server. Now, JTAPI will carry three different type of message, routing request, routing control, uh, device and call monitoring, and device and call signaling. Those three protocol uh, signaling messages will be carried between the call manager and PG server ultimately toward the UCCE system. Now each PIM will point to a particular CTI manager on any given server. So there are only one particular uh, CTI manager per server that PIM can point to. Each redundant pair of PG will share a unique JTAPI user account that you must create. The user ID is now the CTI manager. This this is how, well. The user ID is used to track the CTI manager between different application. Now let's assume you have a scenario where you have subscriber one, which will connect to Cisco Voice Gateway, the router itself. Then you have subscriber two. Let's say this is my subscriber two, which connects to the UCC system through the CTI manager. Now, because the voice gateway is registered to subscriber 1 and UCC is registered to subscriber 2, because both sub 1 and sub 2 are in a cluster, so what happens when a call arrives on the voice gateway, the for, first the call has to go to subscriber 1 because that's where it's registered to. And using the inter cluster message, that call will be forwarded to subscriber 2 before it can go to the UCCE system. So subscriber 2 will be, is, is receives a call because PG is registered to subscriber 2. <clears throat> so as I said, the communication between the call manager and a PG, uh, there are three type of messages are carried over. You have routing control, you have device and call monitoring, and you have device and call control. Now. Each one of these type will have different purposes. Uh, depending on how the call is, uh, which direction of the call is coming in, or which direction the call is going, or what state the call is in, uh, these three these three type of messages either can be carried on a single call, or can be uh, some of them. Some of the call may not have all all three, but maybe one or two. So let's take a look at example. Most call may use all three type of JTAPI communication. Now, when a call arrives from the call manager to the UCCE, so scenario is that you get a voice gateway, your call manager, your PG, your ICM, UCCE. In this scenario, what's happening is you have call coming from the gateway to the call manager 
to the UCC. So in this case, call manager is sending a route request to the UCC, a message that enables the cluster, cluster being the call manager, to request routing instruction from the UCC system. So that's your first prompt message being used using the JTAPI communication. Then next step, get your voice gateway. Oops. You have your voice gateway. I'm not sure why this is happening. Let me erase it. Go back, come back. Gateway to call manager. Call manager to PG. PG to UCCE. Now, the first step, we already covered that. The next step is when when a subscriber receives a routing response from the UCC. So let's assume the UCC has an agent available, extension of the agent is 2001. This number will be returned back to call manager to route the transfer the call to that agent. That number is actually being carried. This statement right here will be controlled by the device and call control, where a message that enables a cluster, call manager, to receive instruction from the UCCE on how to control the device or a call. Like what do I do? Do I transfer? Do I forward? Do I, do I send it to a voicemail? Do I send it to an agent? So and so. When subscriber receives a routing response, okay, so the last option, the subscriber notifies the UCC that the phone is ringing. So because the phone is registered to the call manager, when there is a phone ringing, phone status has changed or something like that, then the device and call monitoring message will be carried between the caller, uh, so between the call manager and UCC system because the, the device and call monitoring which allows the message to be enabled between the cluster to notify the UCCE the status of the chain a device has changed or the call has changed. Now prior to configuring a PG server we must connect to the PBX and download the JTAPI client in order to synchronize a PG protocol between the PG server and the unified CM or call manager. From the feed PG server, you're going to log into your call manager, download the JTAPI client and install it. And while you install it, you put the IP address of the TFTP server of your US cluster or whichever cluster you're working on. This is the reason why we can't point to multiple command separate cluster because each cluster will have their own set of settings. So we log into call manager, we go to application menu, go to plugin, uh, download the JTAPI 64 bit plugin, install it like any software. So here you can put the IP address of your TFTP server. Next step in call manager is to create a CTI route point. A CTI route point is required to send all calls from the call manager to UCC. So CTI route point is like a trigger point. So you must configure at least one CTI route point with a necessary directory and a dial number. Now call center number will be translated to this CTI route point using a translation pattern. Now CTI route point will be associated with the JTAP user so that system knows that this is going to be JTAPI communication. CTI route point will be then registered by the PG server once the dial number is configured. Dial number or extension number of CTI route point must be unique even if they are not separate partition. So here's an example of a dial number that I have, the help desk with a bunch of phone numbers, but they must be unique. Now, now the third is, next step is to create an application user who's going to do the authentication and authorization between the PG server and the call manager server. So we go to application menu, uh, type app user and select the username, associate the CTI route point and all the agent phone, very similar function to the RMCM user in, call, in UCCX and make sure this user belongs to this group called CTI, standard CTI enabled. Now, once we configure the call manager part and the PG is synchronized with the call manager, uh, for example, call manager um, 
or a JTAPI. Our next step is to go to the UCCE and prepare the UCC server to listen for PG connectivity from the peripheral gateways. So therefore, we must create a PG process or PG using PG Explorer to listen to the PG traffic. You must configure an interface controller must be configured. An interface controller will operate at two level, a physical level and a logical level. Physical device is a single instance of a device. Logical device is either a physical device or more than one log, uh, physical device running in a duplex. Physical interface controller could be network interface controller, which is communicate directly to your service provider. Peripheral gateway or PG that communicates with ACD, PVX or VRU at a contact center to monitor status and gather information. PG can also act as a routing client should you need to. A physical device is a single instance of a device where a logical could either be a, si a, physic a single physical device or more than one physical device running in duplex. Now the two type of physical controller we have is the NIC itself which is an external interface connects to the service provider uh, to the central controller whereas the addition, uh, second one is the peripheral gateway. Now one, to prepare a UCCE to listen to the PG process, what we need to do is first go to the configuration mode, go to the PG Explorer, and add our own PG, perf, uh, add a peripheral gateway. So what's important here is that once we create and save the peripheral gateway, these numbers that you see right here highlighted, uh, they are called the logical controller ID and a physical controller ID. These numbers by default are unassigned. So as soon as you save that in uh, PG process, well, they will, those numbers will be automatically assigned. And the first number that it assigns is 5,000. And it will increment it from that from their point onward. Now here's a PG that I've created called USUCM cluster. Now in USUCM cluster, the client type is CUCM. That means this PG is designed for CUCM, call manager. So we call it usually unified PG. Underneath that, we're gonna create peripheral. So which is right here. So we can add, uh, so oh, my mistake in terms of the drawing, uh, this right here points to this and this is your PIM, which points to the peripheral setting. Now the PIM has its own peripheral ID, as you can see, 5000. Uh, this is just an arbitrary name. You can choose whatever the name you want. So here what we have done, we define a PIM called EUS CUCM cluster. The client type is going to be CUCM. Now because the parent or whatever you want to call it, the, uh, the higher hierarchy, the client type is set to CUCM. So this is only going to give you only one offer, that is CUCM. If here we have generic, then I could choose CUCM here or I could choose IPI VR, VRU. So then, then that PG becomes generic PG. Right now, this is a unified PG. If I want this PG to be able to re become a routing client, then I must make sure say enable post routing. Enable post routing makes sure that that PG can request, send a request to the UCC system. So as you can see, in order to configure my EUS cluster as a routing client, I must go to the routing client tab, define a routing client name. Again, the name is important for you to be able to identify, uh, you know, which uh, cluster this device belongs to. Because when you look at the log or traces, you will see these names repeatedly. Uh, for CVP, very similar. I will add a CVP via PG. Make sure the client type is set to VRU, that is my parent, and then it become a VRU PG. Whereas if I say generic, I will, it'll become a generic PG. Then I have a PIM, which will go to the peripheral, have his own ID, name, and of course, if I want CVP to be routing client, make sure that is check, check here as well. Again, if I want the CVP or VRU to become a routing client, here is your routing client concept. Now, in order for you to configure VRU, we must define VR network VRU type. Uh, we covered that in our one of our previous slide. 
you create a network VRE for CVP type 10 and define the type of labels that you need. So here we have two labels, one that is from call manager, one that is through the CVP server. Uh, once the VRU is created, we will go to the CVP PIM right here and then we will assign it to the advanced tab, the VRU that we just created. Now, once we are done with this, now we log into Windows Server where the PG is going to be configured. So this is the actual virtual machine where I'm going to install the PG gateway, which could be the same server as a router or it could be a separate server. So I will log into one of those UCC server where the P agent PG is going to be configured. First thing I want to do is go to the configure uh, UCC tools. Go to peripheral gateway setup and then click on peripheral gateway. So once you click on add and add a peripheral gateway. Now again, keep in mind, you must have your instance. If you do not see the instance, then you gotta check your web setup. Now here, we're gonna add the PG1 for site A, and the type is gonna be CUCM. <laughs> and because I am configuring this for production, I must make sure the duplex is set up. It is a production mode, and auto start in a, at the system startup it's not a mandatory but something you may want to do that so you click next and the next you are going to define uh, logical controller ID uh, logical controller ID which is obtained from your PG Explorer remember those IDs that were auto assign uh, so therefore it's coming from there and 5000 you'll see uh, that is the number so whatever the number you see on the PG logical controller ID that is the number you're going to define here. Once that is done, click on add to uh, add a PIM. So this is the first PIM I'm going to uh, uh, configure. You make sure you enable the PIM. That's the first thing a lot of, a lot of candidates I have seen over the years of training is that they always forgot that. They, they get everything up, but they forgot to enable it. Now the peripheral name, this name is basically an arbitrary name. It does not have to match the actual peripheral name on the UCC side, central controller side. However, it is, you know, for best practice, always keep the name as closest to the PG or the purpose of the device as possible. What is important here is though, however, is that peripheral ID. That ID has 5,000 5, has to come from this area, the PIM. This is something that you've configured in the previous couple of slides ago uh, under the uh, let's say UCC is under the um, peripheral interface manager uh, PG Explorer now once that is done this is the IP address of your CTI manager this happens to be the subscriber or publisher depending on which one you want to use this is your application user and the password and of course the codec that you're going to use for mobile agent codec once this is configured click OK now, it's going to ask you which PG is preferred to be active. You can say site A or site B or none. Uh, so obviously, what you want to do, you, you want to keep no site preference and let the router decide which PG becomes the active PG. Click next. You, this is where you define your private and public interface. Make sure you define the appropriate IP addresses or host name. And if you are going to use a host name, make sure your DNS is configured properly. So here you define the visible address for PG1A, visible address for PGB, router visible address for PG, uh, sorry, A, router visible high, A, A for high. So, so I mean, pretty much we use the same IP address for high and uh, medium, whereas private, we use a different network address. Once PG is activated, what you want to do is go to the framework portico where you can actually check the peripheral gateway one, the PG one that you just added. And what we're looking here is two things, gateway, JTAP gateway and the PIM. So both should be active right here. And if both active, that means they were successfully uh, configured properly. They have been successfully communicating with the PG, sorry, the peripheral itself, in this case, the call manager. If for some reason the user ID is incorrect or JTAPI 
plugin was not installed or the plugin has a wrong IP address, this will obviously become either unconfigured, shut down, not configured or idle. This is side A. If you configure the same thing on side B, side B will have very similar except side B will be sitting idle. Now, once the agent PG is configured, your next step is to configure the CTI server. Why do we need the CTI server? CTI server is required by the FINAS to communicate with the central controller as well as the uh, control the phones in call manager. Each agent PG will include one CTI server, which handles the call control and agent request from the desktop. In this case, the agent desktop happens to be the FINAS server. CTI service will connect to one site or other depending on which site is active. CTI server will process agent request, a stat request, and update the central controller for considering a routing decision. So the communication is as follows. Finus server talks to CTI server, CTI server talks to agent PG, agent PG of course talks to UCCE or to the CM server, call manager. So you must have at least one CTI manager in your environment. So how do I add a CTI? Very straightforward, very similar to adding a PG instead of peripheral gateway. I'm gonna choose CTI server. Next, this is gonna be first one, CG1, uh, site A, system ID one. This number right here, 42027, this is where FINA server point to. FINA server will point to that IP address and the CTI server will listen to this port. Once CTI server is up, you should see the CTI server one should go active and which port it is listening to and what IP address is listening to. So make sure the right IP address is, is, uh, is pointing to the CTI server and the report is correct. And you can change the port if you want to. There's absolutely no restriction of not, not being able to change the port. Now we're coming to adding VRU PG or PG4 CVP server. Very similar thing. Make sure using the PG Explorer, you configure the PG server, a PG gateway with a client type VRU. Add a PIM. Make sure the PIM, you, know, you note down the peripheral ID and logical controller ID. Routing, uh, to make it a routing client, make sure enable post routing and then go to routing tab to make sure define a name. On the PG server or dedicated server where the PG is going to be installed, you select the PG ID, select site A or site B, but the selection type should be VRU. The selected type will be VRU. Again, same thing, logical controller ID goes all the way to the PG Explorer, add a PIM, and the PIM will point to the peripheral ID right there. This is the IP address of your CVP server. And this is your VRU port. Now, this is the default VRU port, but it can be changed. Again, same step, uh, preference in any particular site being preferred, you say A, A, B, A or B or node site preference, let the router decide, define your pri pri private network and a public network. And now, once that is up and running, you go to CVP to start customizing CVP. Unless, until you configure the CVP site, it will not, your VRUPG will not be active. So in the CVP, what we're gonna do, first thing is add a call server. And we go to do that device management, call server add, define the IP address of your CVP server and a host name. Then in the ICM tab, we make sure we say maximum length is set to five. This is the same length as your VRU label. Remember 4999 in network VRU, that's the same length. If there was 4999, you put four digit here. If there was like 55555, then you put whatever the length of digit over here is extremely important. And this VRU port that we talked about earlier, right, 5000, right there, is coming from this place, right here. So you can change it on both sides if you need to. Under SIP, you will configure some static route. For example, if there is any 
uh, you need a, a static route for 9191919192929292. These two uh, dial plan, um, uh, so these two numbers are required to play the ringtone and error to, uh, tone. Uh, we'll talk about more of these on the CVP slides. There's some static route that we need. In order to enable the static route, make sure this is checked. And in the static route, what we're doing, we're saying any call with 4999 should be sent to this particular gateway, which is VXML gateway. Any call with 9 will be sending the same gateway because of these numbers. Any call with 41 goes to call manager in US clusters. Any call with 3 goes to India cluster. So I have a very static routing. Uh, unless you are using SIP proxy server, you will have to configure this static routing route for the SIP to work, for CVP to work. <clears throat> All right, CVP status. Once you reboot the CVP server, and if the PG is up and running, you should see the status up for site A. Site B, the status will be partial. You can go to the CVP. You can check the th uh, PG peripheral gateway A, and you will see the CVP PIM being active. All right, so that's pretty much how you configure a uh, agent PG and a VRU PG. But make sure the logical controller ID and uh, peripheral IDs are uh, noted down properly, that you define them accurately. Misconfiguring them will either shut down the service or reboot the server. If you are going to configure a duplex, make sure both private and public network is configured properly. Agent PG must have a CTS server for Finos to communicate with central controller and being able to route calls to uh, send the calls or control the devices in call manager. All right, so that's pretty much it for this particular chapter. Thank you for your patience and I will see you in the next.